And last week, I presented a two hour free Discord class where I recreated this style rooftop material. Now, let me show you how I managed to build this pattern in five simple steps. Now, let's get started. Hey guys, and welcome. As you can see, I created this style rooftop pattern that is of course it is not finished but at least the pattern itself with some other details are already done and I wanted to show you how I made this so you can recreate it for your own materials or maybe you're looking for doing something similar so let's get started step number one is creating our main shape yes for this kind of pattern the best way of doing it is just creating each individual shape for that you're gonna create a shape node with a pattern of disk you're gonna set your scale to 0 0.56 and your degrees to 45. After that, you're gonna get a transform 2D. You're gonna kind of increase the shape in size and also kind of shrink it a little bit. You can see here how we're gonna get this same result by just doing a little bit like this and maybe a little bit like this. Yeah, try to center it a little bit and that should be more likely. You can also kind of stretch this in this way. Also, if this is not working, then you can do Alt to kind of like doing diagonal or to just do some shift to do it on the sides as well and kind of get the same shape. Once you have that shape, create a blur and use an intensity of 1.13. Remember, we are using a high quality grayscale blur, so you have to pull your quality to one. Once that is done, you're gonna pull your grays to your blacks, just like I did here. We want to change this shape, yes, from a hard edge to a kind of a blur edge. And finally, kind of this small bevel that is gonna give us this kind of really nice edge on our main shape. Step number two is creating the details of our edges. In order to do this, I started with the big shapes of my edge destruction. So I used my levels into a slow blur, which is having a sample of 32 and intensity of 1.49. As I wanted to kind of like sculpt things inward, I'm using my min mode. I could later do a small video explaining everything on the slow blur, but for the moment, we're just gonna keep forward with this. And then you made a Clouds 2 with a scale of 4 and an HQ Blur with an intensity of 4.18 for my slope input. This is gonna create these kind of the results that we can even change this with a random seed or scale to just generate different details in our tiles. As you can see, some of them are changing and I'll explain later why, why not all of them are changing. So we're gonna input this into a blend node. This slope Blur is gonna go to the foreground while the levels is gonna be going to the background. We are using a copy blending mode with a Gaussian noise with a scale of 32 in order to blend this information. Now that we have the big shapes, let's go to small uh, small shapes. So in this case, I kind of repeated the same pattern. I'm using again a uh, Klaus 2 with the scale 4, but I'm now using an HQ. I'm just using two slope blurs. One has the blur mode with a value 0 0.5, while the other one has a value 0 0.05. Yes, I'm blending both of them into a copy using Gaussian spots to generate what you can see here, more variation. Now for step three is where things get a little more interesting because this is mostly the end to making one shape. And the fourth step is gonna be the one that we are gonna be using to recreate everything into something more specific. So the first node is going to be a quantized grayscale. So quantized grayscale, what it's doing is basically we are getting this and generating smaller steps. So you can see how this is looking here and how this looks right now. So I can create more steps into this. The reason for that is because my reference have this kind of stepping into and we can really play around with it a lot, as you can see. We can play with the slope or any other kind of things that you can find in here to make this more interesting. Remember to try to stitch, stick to your reference. If it's not looking like this, then don't do it. So after using your quantized grayscale, you wanna use the levels to auto levels everything a little bit. You can press this button here just to make it. For example, if you check and you have used the same parameters I use in my quantized grayscale, which are eight steps only, and the rest is gonna be all the same. You can see that this has actually not black information. It's kind of gray. So if you go here, you're gonna check this and see that this area is kind of marked. This means there's some information that's not in the right place. So if you took press this button, you're gonna get to these auto levels, and this is gonna be pitch black. Now that you have that, we're gonna blur this again with an HQ blur, and finally use a non-uniform blur. Now my HQ blur has a value of 0.2, while my non-uniform directional warp, yes, has more parameters, with an intensity of 20, our warp angle of 92.56, a trail mode in max, 
and these parameters here being 0.15 in trail length, 0.91 in trail fate and 0.07 in trail curve. Finally, for our first step, what we're gonna do is gonna start to make the most important part for this to work. And it's basically creating a gradient linear ramp with a gradient map just to control if we have to, and we have to multiply this information. Now, why are we doing that? We are doing that because, as you can see, these tiles are one under the other. And in order to do that, if they are going to tile, we need the part that is going to be on top to be whiter than the part that is going to be below. Yes, so this gray area is the one we are not seeing, and this white area is what we are seeing. Yeah, so we have to, we need to have that kind of gradient so we can overlay one shape with the other. Now, the first step is basically creating more variation. This step can be done by just copying everything that we have here and pasting it in right there and just changing some parameters. During the class, I took the freedom to not only do that, but also actually recreate this node. Yes, I created my own node where I can change everything I need. For example, I can change this from a roof tile to a shape node. Yeah, where I can actually input this, lower this, go to my node and use my custom shape input. And as you see, this is gonna be actually helping me or making to making different kind of tiles without having to fill my graph with so many things of course it's kind of heavy and it's kind of like in process so it has a lot of space to learn now this is going to help me to add more variation so you can do this and change all the parameters that we have seen right here into creating more details but if you can see here i'm just changing the big shapes i'm not changing more than that because the only thing that is going to be seen at distance is the big shapes most of these materials are not going to be seen from close up so there is actually Actually more to be seen from from far away than from close that doesn't mean we don't have to add some surface detail to it of course we added surface detail but again this part is incomplete so we're not going to be showing it until it's done now for the fifth step it's the tiling and this might be a little bit familiar to you as we have seen this technique in another video now I'm gonna show you this but I have a surprise for you at the end of the video where I'm gonna ask you to do something so stay with me so for this I use a tile generator with a tile of 10 by 10 apart from input number of four because I have four different tiles and I use a scale of 1.45 with a scale random of 0.1. Don't go so far with the scale random because you want them to kind of be overlaying one with each other. Now for this to work what you need to do is you go to the bottom of your, of your node and change the blending mode to max. Remember if you have it in add it's just going to create some problem in center areas like for example here. Now we want you to have it in max. Why aren't we doing anything with this? Why aren't we off setting or anything because we are going to be doing the offset manually. We're going to get our tile generator into the transformation 2D and we're going to combine the result of my tile generator and transformation into a blend with max lighting. In case you want to see how this works, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my own transformation and a blend. Now that we have this, the only thing I have to do is get this and move it in diagonal to generate my pattern and voila, I have this. I have my pattern done. Now for the end of it, just an extra detail because I don't like having things so strong and sharp, I just use a non-uniform blur grayscale to generate this intensity of 0.05 with 16 samples and 9 blades. Again, because I don't want this to be really, really sharp. Now, as I have just pointed out, this is the part where we, we made the surface detail. Unfortunately, I haven't finished this, so you're gonna have to wait till in our free Discord class on Discord, we finish this with all the students to recreate here in a tutorial for you to actually learn how to make this material from start to finish. Now you know how I created this pattern, but this is not the only pattern we can use with this technique. How could we combine what we learned today with this image showing now on screen? If you know the answer, just leave it in the comments, but if you want to be more detailed, you can drop how you do it in our Discord server, where we have a specific section called Work in Progress for this kind of events where professionals help you build the materials you want. You can join us by clicking on the link at the description of the video. I will see you in the next chapter and goodbye.